setting Washington's agenda. The Morning Majority, 5 to 9 on 630 WMAL. 637 on WMAL. All right, number of Americans living below the poverty line at its highest level in over 50 years now. Census Bureau now says more than 46 million people in this country under the poverty level. Robert Rector is an expert on all things poverty and the U.S. welfare system. He's with the Heritage Foundation, joins us now with the Morning Majority. Good morning, Robert. Good morning. So why are these numbers so bad? I guess first question is, what is the definition of poverty these days? And has it changed? No, uh, <clears throat> it really hasn't changed. It's adjusted for inflation. A census defines a family as poor as if they have an income, if it's a family of four, of roughly below $22,000 a year. The problem is that when they go to count the family's income, they ignore the entire welfare state and the entire safety net. So these numbers are absolute nonsense. And the government spends about $9,000 on cash, food, housing, medical care for each low-income person that is not counted by census. Okay. Now, there's no doubt what these numbers are showing is that we have very high prolonged unemployment rates here. That has caused a lot of suffering in the middle class and the working class. But if you look down at the bottom of the economy, say the bottom fifth of the population, their consumption expenditures are actually up. And so when people hear these numbers about poverty, they're thinking, and what the TV news shows you is homeless families and so forth. Mm -hmm. In fact, only 1% of the poor are homeless. If you, Last year, the U.S. Department of Agriculture asked poor parents, were your children hungry at any point in the last year, at any time in the last year, were they hungry and you didn't have enough food to feed them? Four percent of poor parents said their children were hungry. Ninety-six percent said they were never hungry at a single point in time. A poor child in the United States is far more likely to have cable TV, uh, a widescreen television, a computer, an Xbox, and a TiVo in his house than he is to be hungry. So we, there is suffering due to unemployment, but the normal images of 46 million poor people, meaning people don't have food to eat and they don't have a place to live in, just absolutely not true, haven't been true for 40 years. And this is based on data collected from actual poor families reported a to the government. All, everything I use are from government surveys. A lot of these surveys, I think I'm the only person in the world that ever looks at them. Okay, <laughs> The Census Bureau just puts these numbers out. This, this poverty number has been around since the beginning of the war on poverty, and because it does not count, for example, food stamps or public housing as income, it always grossly exaggerates the degree of stark deprivation. It's a pretty good indicator for unemployment and the consequences of unemployment, but beyond that, it simply is very misleading. Again, when Rasmussen did a poll about three or four weeks ago, and he said, uh, look, if somebody has an adequate house or apartment to live in and they have enough food to eat, do you consider them to be poor? And by an overwhelming majority, the respondents said, no, that family's not poor. And by those standards of this 46 million people, about four, eight out of ten of them are simply not poor. They have a perfectly adequate supply of food. Uh, they're not hungry. That If you ask them, were you hungry, they say no. And, and they live in houses and apartments that, on average, the average poor person in the United States has a larger house and apartment than the average European, not a poor European, but the average person in England or France or Germany, and these houses are in good repair. So just the images that we have that there's all this stark deprivation are have been uh, untrue. We have a very large safety net in particular that the government, that the, the census ignores when it counts poverty. Robert, when it, when it comes to people evaluating how best to serve the poor with mm -hmm. the safety net, you say you're the only guy who looks at it. Does the government not use this data to determine what it needs to spend money on and what it shouldn't? Absolutely not. Okay. Great. I mean, Super. you could look at, if you look very closely at these hunger numbers, for example, you can see that about maybe one out of five poor households, there are adults in the household who are running out of food at the end of the month. And when that happens, what happens, the adult will cut back their food. The child will continue to eat. 
they don't particularly care. The left doesn't care about that because the number isn't big enough. They want numbers like one in four children are hungry in the United States, which are, are absolutely so, preposterous. So that, that's sort of the, 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 the question I wanted to ask. I mean, this falls very nicely into the Democratic narrative that, that, that they want to sell, especially during a campaign year. Oh, yes. Forty-six million p- p- people are poor, and therefore we need a bigger welfare state. And we need to tax the rich. Absolutely. And, but the, the reality is that we're spending this year $900 billion, nearly a trillion dollars, on means-tested cash, food, housing, and medical care for the poor. If it was actually true that we were spending $9,000 for each low-income person in the United States and we still had tens of millions of toddlers who were passing out during, because they didn't have food to eat when they go to school or, or people that tens of millions of people that were homeless or were living in decrepit shacks and things like that, it would be a far worse indictment on the welfare state than, than conservatives could possibly provide. No one not even the federal government can spend $9,000 for each low-income person and still have massive hung- one in four children hungry across the United States. You simply can't do it, and it's not true. Now, th- then I might, might add, if one was a thoughtful liberal, well, does that mean that the welfare state worked? Well, indeed, the welfare state does prop up living standards, but when Lyndon Johnson launched the war on poverty, he said the goal was to not deal merely with the symptoms of poverty, but with the causes. He wanted to make people prosperous and self-sufficient without government assistance. He actually wanted to shrink welfare dependence and turn, he said he wanted to turn the the poor from tax eaters into taxpayers. By those standards... We have spent $17 trillion on the war on poverty, and the capacity for self-support in low-income communities is far, far worse than when we began. Wow. Interesting. Thank you, Robert. Great to have you on the program. Thanks very much. Thank you. Robert Rector from the Heritage Foundation.